achieving perfect focus every time when using manual focus lenses with single lens reflex cameras has nothing to do with chance or luck. It is about having the right understanding of optical principles and mastering the correct technique. My name is Thomas Eisel, I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria, and I welcome you to today's Manual Focus Masterclass for single lens reflex cameras, both analog and digital. Two basic optical concepts have to be understood to truly understand why the following focusing techniques work so well. And those two concepts are critical focus and depth of field. If you are already familiar with these concepts, you can skip the following section. The term critical focus describes the portion of the image that is optically in focus. In reality, critical focus is actually achieved on a plane, the plane of critical focus, which runs parallel to the image sensor or film, depending on whether you are using an analog or digital camera. If we take a look at this drawing here, we see the camera on the left hand side, this black box, and on the right hand side is our subject, which is this blue square. The red bar indicates the sensor or film. And the red line over here is the plane of critical focus. As you can see, the plane of critical focus runs parallel to the image sensor. The green lines indicate the light rays that actually project the image onto the sensor or film. It is very important to emphasize that perfect critical focus is only achieved on this plane of critical focus. Nowhere else in the image is something critically in focus. So you want to make sure that the most important part of your photograph actually is placed on this line of critical focus. So what happens when you turn the focus ring of your camera? You are actually moving the plane of critical focus back and forth depending on the direction you turn the ring. So you can either set it to infinity or you can move it as close as possible up to the minimum focusing distance of the lens you've currently mounted on your camera. So depth of field is a term that is often misunderstood. Depth of field describes the distance between the nearest and farthest point in a scene that is still rendered acceptably sharp in the final image. That is depth of field. So what means acceptably sharp? Actually, that differs from photographer to photographer and manufacturer to manufacturer. What might be acceptable for one photographer or for one medium, let's say for a darkroom enlargement, might not be acceptably sharp for other purposes like a digital print. Also, lens manufacturers have varying definitions 
of what they deem acceptably sharp. I modified the previous drawing. Now we see depth of field. Again, we have our camera on the left and the subject, the blue square, on the right. The plane of critical focus is still there. It's the red line. What I've added is an orange box and the orange box indicates the area of acceptable focus or depth of field. So what you see on your lens indicated by these little brackets is this orange box. And again, it is up to the lens manufacturer to decide what he or she really thinks that is still acceptable focus. So be careful as the critical focus is only achieved along the plane of critical focus, no matter what this focusing scale on the lens tells you. Regardless of the set aperture of the lens, the depth of field extends further behind the subject than it does towards the camera. This is what is called the near-far distribution of acceptable focus. It is very important to keep that in mind for later. If you set your lens to a wide aperture, the depth of field decreases. If you set your lens to a smaller aperture, the depth of field will increase. No matter which aperture you set on your lens, the plane of critical focus will never change. It will always remain this plane. With this theoretical knowledge, it is possible to make some deductions for the photographic practice. First, when I took a look at my images that are out of focus, I noticed that I mostly set the focus point, the plane of critical focus, behind the subject. So the images were back focused. And if we take a look at the near-far distribution, this can be easily explained because the depth of field in front of the plane of critical focus is much smaller, making back focus more likely. So what can we do about that? An easy fix to improve your hit rate when manually focusing is stopping down the lens. By setting a smaller aperture, the depth of field increases and it becomes more likely that you get acceptable focus. I myself am not very satisfied with this solution to the problem because of two things. First and foremost, I want to have the plane of critical focus exactly on the most important part of the image. And stopping down the lens only increases depth of field but doesn't help with putting the plane of critical focus on the right part of the image. Second, the effect of increased depth of field is that more things in the image are sharper. And for me as a portrait and fashion photographer, that is not what I want. I want the subject or the eyes of the subject or the piece of clothing or whatsoever I want that to be in acceptable focus, but nothing else. So and by stopping the lenses down too much, that might lead to other things in the image getting in acceptable focus. And I just don't like this effect. The problem with getting the plane of critical focus exactly where you want is that every lens 
always displays an area of acceptable focus. Granted, the wider the aperture of the lens is that you are looking through, the smaller the area of acceptable focus is that you actually see. This is why an f1.4 lens is always easier to focus than an f5.6 lens because you actually see the point of critical focus much more easily with an f1.4 lens than with an f5.6 lens. So for me, even if I stop down a lens for the shoot itself, I prefer actually having an f1.4 on my digital single lens reflex or analog reflex cameras because it's much easier to determine the point of critical focus, the plane of critical focus with these fast lenses, even if they are set to f5.6, so even if they stop down in the moment of taking the actual picture. The following procedure guarantees the highest hit rate when focusing on still subjects. It is actually not that difficult. First, start by setting the lens to infinity. Always start with the lens set to infinity. Frame your subject and start turning the lens to the closer focusing distances until the subject is getting sharper and sharper and then go beyond that. So you kind of set the focus closer as it actually should be. If you remember the near far distribution, what you're actually doing, you are moving the near far distribution, the depth of field, closer, 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 closer than it actually should be. And then you go with the focusing ring in the opposite direction until you see the subject achieving the highest amount of sharpness. Then actually you can take the picture. If you are not sure whether you really have achieved the plane of critical focus on your subject or on the most important part of the image, just repeat the process. Go with the lens towards infinity, move closer and drop back in. Why does this technique work so well? It makes use of two things. It makes use of the near-far distribution phenomenon and secondly it makes use of how human perception actually works. If you go from infinity to close focus, you will see a sudden increase in sharpness because of the near-far distribution. Depth of field is much smaller towards the camera than behind the subject. And by going even further and then turning the focusing ring the other direction, you give yourself more time and more let's say, turning distance to get to the point where critical focus is actually achieved. So the chances of you missing that are reduced significantly. Focusing on moving subjects requires a different approach. I strongly discourage you from attempting to follow the moving subject with your manual focus turning action. What I recommend instead is what I'd like to call trap focusing. So first you have to watch your subject and determine whether it is approaching you 
or moving further away from you. If the subject is approaching you, you set the focus point to a point in the scenery where the subject will pass through. The same is of course true if the subject moves away from you, but this time you have to place the plane of critical focus or the focus distance behind the subject as it will move towards this point then. You then just wait until the subject gets in this zone of critical focus and then you fire the camera. Ideally you have this camera set to um, multiple frames, so to continuous uh, releases. If it's a film camera that might not be available but with that you can kind of increase the chances of getting the subject um, in the right moment. It might also be feasible to do this a couple of times. So you subject is approaching you, you set the point of focus, you wait until it's in there, you fire, you go even closer, wait again, fire, go closer, wait, fire, so you have like more chances of getting the subject at various distances. Modern single lens reflex cameras with autofocus systems provide some sort of electronic focusing aids. So essentially it is a system that tells you whether the focusing point has detected sufficient focus. Keep in mind that while these systems are very helpful in achieving critical focus, they are to a certain degree impacted by the same issues as the human vision is. So every lens on your DSLR displays a certain amount of depth of field. If you are using a slower aperture lens, the depth of field is actually greater. So what happens when you use this digital rangefinder, it might be difficult for the camera to tell the exact critical plane of focus. And you can easily test that. You can mount your DSLR on a tripod, focus on a still subject with the technique I described earlier, and then check the focus indicator. It should usually light up, indicating that focus is achieved. And then move the lens, the manual focus ring around a little bit and you will see that the focus indicator will stay on for a certain amount of rotation depending on the lens. Usually the slower the lens the more you can turn the ring before the camera actually says all oh, right this is no longer in focus. So for very critical work like macro photography or portrait photography I recommend using the digital range finder with the same technique I described earlier. Set the lens to infinity, go closer than you actually need and then drop in and as soon as the indicator lights up you have usually achieved critical focus. By applying these techniques and this theoretical knowledge to your everyday photography you will definitely achieve more sharp photos with your manual focus lenses. I guarantee that. However, you have to really practice as often as possible. I myself love to use manual focus lenses for commercial work. But in order to ensure that I get the shot that I have to, I practice with a manual focus lens on my Nikon D800 DSLR every day in the morning after I get up. I take five shots at different distances, always going through the same manual focus routine. Infinity, closer than needed, drop in, take the shot. By doing that, I was able to drastically improve my hit rate. And actually, that's what 
makes using manual focus lenses fun. Not only the process, not only the image quality, but actually getting the shot. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and following me on Instagram. You can also find this article in written form in the link down in the description. See you next time.